What is going on everybody? Charmander is back again. It has been a long time since I've done a speculation video, but now with season two coming in here, we are going to be able to cover all the new operators that are coming in this year. And this week we're going to be starting it off with the Spanish operators. Now, just a word of warning, all of the information that I give today are my own research and my own little spin on things. None of this that I say that hasn't been already confirmed by Ubisoft is confirmed. So take everything here today with a grain of salt. This is just my own speculation and my own theories on what might come into the game. So let's get started with the police force that I believe they will be using. They are known as the GEO or the Grupo Especial de Operaciones. They were formed during the 1970s to follow the example of the German GSG-9 SWAT team in order to fight terrorism and various organized crime groups around Spain at the time. The group specializes in diplomatic security, so watching over embassies. They also specialize in underwater search and rescue. There's a lot of diving teams and a lot of diving missions that you can find if you research and get to the websites. And of course, being a police unit, they are equipped to take down any other crises that come to them in their respective fields. Going right into the actual game itself, I'm just going to kind of cover this because it's already been posted and everybody else knows about it. The map has been shown and teased. It is called Coastline. Now, from what it looks like in the video above, it does look like it's a bit of a ruined exterior leading to an oceanfront estate. There's lots of lights, it's really tight rooms with good cover connected to really long hallways. So it looks like as you enter in, everything's gonna kind of go into one choke point and things are gonna get into really intense firefights and really intense battles. It seems that there's gonna be a lot of options to break open walls and ceiling patches and things like that in order to get good angles on other teammates. It's gonna be interesting to see if they go into the pool area at all. You can see that there is a pool area on this. Uh, it looks really nice. I myself was going for um, one of the famous churches or cathedrals that they have in Spain. I think that'd be really cool to have all this really like kind of old school gothic looking uh, castle, stained glass, pews and everything. Just making it really kind of like almost creepy to see that people would want to take over this type of landmark. So getting into one of my favorite parts of the speculations are the new weapons you might see in the game. We're going to start off with the attacking side first. I'm going to call the CET ME58. It is a battle rifle. It's kind of a prototype to the HK G3 that you've seen. Uh, it's mainly used by Spanish and Latin American forces. It is actually a Spanish made gun. Um, also used by police forces over in Latin America. Um, I would say that the game would probably put it under the category of Twitch's L8, I believe it is, or the LR8, her single shot long range gun, or even like Buck's single shot gun that he has. Uh, basically, it'd be fired in semi-automatic and fully automatic. You could switch firing modes. It would have pretty good stopping power with a little bit above average recoil. You really want wouldn't want to shoot too much because you would really go off the mark by a lot. And the magazine would probably be akin to Hibana's machine guns magazine, just because if it is a pretty good downrange rifle you're not going to want it to have like 50 rounds in the in the magazine so now going into the new secondary weapon that you might see i'm going to call the and i apologize in advance for the pronunciation the minurin mr73 it is a revolver but it's more of a think of a 38 special so almost a snub nose revolver variant short barrel double action revolver which means you can just pull the trigger as many times as you can until you run out of ammunition lethal at close range like caviar's silenced pistol the damage falls off very significantly though at range quick firing if you need to but below average recoil speed I'm thinking either hand loaded one bullet in each chamber or just like Montaigne's revolver you have the actual little cap that holds all six bullets so you can pump into the gun really quick for a faster reload so the weapons that you probably will see into the game that are already used by other operators the SG commando used by IQ pretty much every and any pump or semi-automatic shotgun the various submachine guns you see the mp5 mp7 p90 etc. The P226 pistol they do use, I believe it is the P226. They're the pistols that the SAT uses and of course a revolver that you see Montaigne using. Now to the trickiest part of the speculation, the operator gadgets. Now this one was a really hard one to do. I am basing mine off of the pictures that we have seen online and the little story that we've gotten with Tachanka's new turret buff. I will be posting the link in the description. I will also be posting a picture while I talk about the first gadget. So let's get right into it. The first gadget I am going to call the V-Shell Enhancement. V-Shell obviously from Velvet Shell, just like the name of the new operation. I'm just kind of using my own inspiration with that. So with the little comic that we've gotten and with Tatanka's new story for his turret, 
we see that there is a engineer group led by a woman known as Mira. Now, what she did was she fixed up the LMG and she put the ballistic shield on it to protect his head. Now, I think that this might be incorporated in the game. We've also seen something that says players have been experiencing something that says press F on the keyboard, obviously, to enhance. So this might go into something as in Mira does something to certain defense operators' equipment in order to make them better. Now, just to kind of make this a little bit more understandable, my own interpretation of it would be, for example, she would go to Jaeger's ADS and give it an extra barrel onto it so that way it has an extra shot to take down one more grenade. I believe it takes out three, so if it takes out three before, now it takes out four projectiles to go flying into the objective room or whatever room that it has been placed inside of. So there'd be basically two different types of gadgets, or at least two different types of reinforcements you would get. The purely defensive one would be Jaeger's ADS, and that would just give it an extra shot. So going something that's more of a blocking mechanism is Bandit's car battery trap. So basically with the car battery trap, she'd place some type of device on top of it that would make it no longer susceptible to EMP grenades, so Thatcher wouldn't be able to use his grenade on that. It sounds a little OP, but the damage done to it still would destroy it, so if you threw a grenade in the room, or if Twitch came out with the drone and shocked it, it would still die. Um, I'm kind of contradicting myself there, but I'm going to just say that the taser is a bit of a ballistic weapon too. It does a little bit of damage, so it would destroy the thing. I guess the purely offensive gadgets would be Capcom's trap. Um, I don't know exactly how that would be enhanced. I'm still kind of playing with this. It's more of just something that was fun that I like to research and I like to kind of put my own spin on it and my own imagination. I'm saying that maybe the, the laser is even harder to detect or maybe there's no laser at all, but that'd be a little bit too out there. So we'll have to see exactly what they do if they decide to go that route. But let's go right into the attacking gadget. I'm going to go out and I'm going to say what a lot of other people have been saying. I'm going to say that the attacking gadget is going to be some type of enhancement scope. I personally am just going to call it the TOS, the thermal optics scope. We were really, really overdue for any type of thermal optics, whether it be night vision or whether it be actual like heat detection, red, greens, and blues, thermal predator style detection. Um, there, of course, would be some type of balance to this. You couldn't just put it on, wait in a corner, and just wait for the enemy team's hot ass head to just come into view and shoot him in the head. You'd have to have some type of range. So if you were at the end of the map, you obviously wouldn't be able to see that far in. You There'd be some sort of range with it, maybe a little bit greater than what Pulse has now for his own cardiac sensor. Um, it'd be really good for any type of DMR, any type of automatic weapon that could fire through walls pretty easily. But at the same time, it would be a bit of a hindrance to go through bright hallways. So if there's a really bright hallway, obviously you're going to see the hot light from the the, um, the hotness from the light. I'm sorry, and it's really just kind of going to get you to stop and either EMP that for a little bit or go through another route. But it would also do something really cool in that it would make smoke grenades really useful. So throwing a smoke grenade in that hallway, you really wouldn't be able to detect the light as a really hot source. You'd be able to see it there, but it would. It really wouldn't get in your way. Throwing a smoke grenade into the, root, into the uh, room or throwing a friendly smoke grenade into the room, using that as cover so you could peek out and take really accurate shots. That'd be really helpful because we don't see smoke grenades used too often as a offensive measure. I mean, you just kind of throw it in to give yourself cover or as I do, I like to throw smoke grenades in and then rush the room. It doesn't always work out all the time, but you know, it happens. Um, now I'm gonna go out on another limb here and put my own little honorable mention. I really let my imagination go haywire for this next one i'm going to go ahead and say that the other attacking gadget could be at least if i had a chance to design this i would think about putting in it's called a sting ball so basically it's a riot control grenade or a riot control mine that is used in prisons and even outside embassies so with the geo it makes sense they would have access to this as they are guarding embassies sometimes and it just fires off a whole shitload of little rubber pellets that hit you and they hurt really bad and you either go away or you go on the ground so basically it'd be a non-lethal device so it'd be interesting to see a non-lethal device in this game um unless you're downed if you were downed it would kill you because it has to have some type of lethality with it even though it's non-lethal so basically the grenade itself would be different in all other grenades is that it would have two detonations the first one is a hybrid type of stun grenade so it would pop you there'd be a little bit of a bang and there'd be a little bit of a flash so you'd be a little disoriented your vision would be kind of hazy and you wouldn't be able to hear as well but the second destination is the actual um, rubber impact balls fires in all directions it hits you it damages you a pretty uh, decent amount let's say like 10 to 20 or 25 HP 
It does minimal damage to barricades and walls and hatches and such, but the best thing about it is because it's non-lethal and it won't kill somebody, it'll down somebody, don't get me wrong, and it'll only kill them if they're down, but you can toss it into the room where the hostage is, and the hostage might get hurt from it, but the hostage will not be put into a down state. However, in order to balance this just a little bit, if the hostage is already hurt, the hostage is going to get downed, or if it's already been down before and the hostage has taken a bullet and is basically on life support, you will kill them. So you do have to be cautious, but it does add a new avenue of play. You can start throwing certain grenades into hostage rooms or around where the hostage is and not worry about hurting them. It adds more of a cautious factor. You can't just put down shields and hide next to the hostage, use it for cover, because if you're low on health and someone throws that sting ball through a window and you go downed and you're the last person, or let's say you're the only one guarding the hostage for whatever reason, then the enemy team's going to come in, get you, get the hostage, and then leave, and it's going to be a pretty easy win if they don't get opposition at the right time. And with that, that is the end of my first speculation of this year with the new operators coming to Rainbow Six. Obviously, there will be three more speculations by the time of the end of the year comes, guys. So do me a favor. If you liked what I had here today, please drop a like. It really does help me. If you subscribe to me, that is also pretty great. If you are already subscribed to me, please click that little bell so that way you get notifications. That way you'll be able to see my videos as soon as I post them, usually on Wednesdays, maybe on Thursdays if I'm lazy, and I apologize for that. Let's go into the final thing that I want to say here today, guys. I'm going to be doing four giveaways by the time of the end of the year. The first giveaway is going to be in this very video, and what I'm going to be offering is the Year 2 Season Pass for Rainbow Six. It's going to be for either PC, Xbox, or PS4, whatever console you use or whatever gaming device you use. Um, in order to enter in the contest, you have to like this video, you have to be subscribed to me, and you have to comment. The comment in my video has to be operator idea, and then you just give me your idea, whatever it is. It could be funny, it could be serious, whatever. I will pick my favorite or the best one that I like, and I will be able to reach you from YouTube if you're subscribed to me, and I will be able to message you. If only if this video gets over a thousand views, in the first 48 hours if it does not then i will not be doing it so that is on you guys spread the word get me notifications get me likes and all that make me youtube money i don't make that much youtube money that little ding right there was my phone telling me that i'm the best rainbow six random speculation youtuber around so thank you guys for giving me that award obviously that probably is not real it might happen who knows let's find out but anyways, I'm going to end that video with that cringeworthy sentence. So all you guys who out there who watch my videos and all that other good stuff, subscribe to me, like to me, and commented on all that other stuff that I love so much. Have a great rest of your week.